Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, I want to continue to talk about how to find equations of planes. And this time we have uh, a plane that, that's determined by two lines that are intersecting at a point. Okay, so the whole situation is that, let's say if we have this plane right here, I mean this line right here, this is the this line. And then if we draw the line, let's say it's in the space, the line looks like this, and then the other, um, the other line, let's highlight that in yellow. What happens is that um, <clears throat> this line is going to intersect the red line here. And then so in that case, they intersect at a point, right? So that's the blue dot is the point of intersection. Okay, so what happens is that if we have two lines that are intersecting and then there was the point that's in there, then the plane that contains the two lines, okay, should also contain this point, right? So that can be a point that we use to find the plane equation. And so that means the first thing that we do is to determine this point of intersection that we have here. Is that okay? So let's just get started. Okay, so um, to find the point of intersection, we actually need to look at the two lines, right? So let me just write this down point of intersection right here. Um, what we can do is that we can set the X component of the first line equal to the X component of the second line. And then we do the same for the Y components and the Z components. And what happened is that we are going to get a system of three equations in two unknowns. Okay, so our system of equations would look like this. We have our first equation, which is 5t plus 6. Actually, let me just write them down. So we have 5t plus 6. The other one is 2t plus 2. And then the third one is t plus 3. What happens is that we are going to set them equal to the corresponding components of the other line, right? So we have um, the 1 minus s. The other one is negative s. And then the last one, we have 2 plus s. And so we have those three equations that we have here. And so now, usually when we are solving this kind of systems, the easy way is to simply just, um, just find one equation that's easy to solve for for one of the variables, and then you just make the substitution, right? So the easy one, I would say, is the equation two. So what happened is that for equation two, I'm just going to rewrite it so that we get, uh, if we multiply both sides by negative one, then we are going to get s is equal to what do we get here negative 2t plus 2 is that okay i put the s on the left side and then i multiply everything by negative 1 oh actually it should be minus 2 right so we have minus 2 here okay so now what happens is that we are going to substitute this back into let's say equation 1 okay so yeah so we want to substitute this into equation one. So now the one becomes, okay, so we have 5t plus six is equal to one minus. Now the s got replaced by this expression right here. So if we have this expression as negative two t minus two, then we have negative two t minus two. So that's what it looks like. So basically we have the whole equation right here. Right, and then the s got replaced by negative two t minus two. And then now let's uh, solve this equation for t because there is only one unknown now. So we will be able to find the answer. So in this case, we have um, we have five t plus six is equal to now we have um, negative negative two t. So we get just positive two t. Okay, and then one minus negative two, one plus two. So we get plus three. And then so now if we move the 2t over and then move the 6 over, then we are going to get 3t is equal to negative 3. So what do we get here? We get t is equal to negative 1. Is that okay? So we got t to be minus 1. And then once we get t to be minus 1, we can simply just plug it back into one of the equations and then we can find s. Okay, actually we do not really need to uh, find S here because if we want the point intersection, we can simply plug this T equals negative one back into the line equation. 
the the line the function for the line and then we can find the point is that okay but uh we just want to verify okay we just want to verify that those two lines actually do intersect so we can plug it back into um the third equation okay so if you plug it back into the third equation then you are going to well the third equation becomes what now if you look at the third equation then this is actually optional so let me just put it in a different color here so the third equation if you just look at the third equation we get negative one plus three is equal to two plus s then you can find um, the s right and if you just solve this equation this is negative two and then minus two then you get the s to be uh, zero is that okay well actually that should be positive two and then positive two minus two you just get zeros that shouldn't be negative two that's yeah i said it wrong okay so we get the s to be zero okay so what we want to do is to just make sure that if we plug the t equals negative one in here and plug the s equals zero in here we are getting the same point so that they do intersect at that point right so now what is the point um plug the t equals negative one in here in fact it's actually easier to plug in the zero in here but we are going to do both yeah so the point is what we have if you plug negative one in here okay so let's do that so from the line from the line uh, 5t plus 6 to t plus 2 and then t plus 3 what happens is that if we we have what we have uh so negative one in here negative five plus six so we get we get what we get um one okay and then if you plug the negative one in here negative two plus two so we get zero okay and then uh plug the negative one in here three minus one so three minus one is two so you just get the point to be two is that okay so we get this point so we get this point of intersection yeah so let's check quickly okay so from the line from the line the other line is the yellow one right here so one minus s negative s two plus s okay and then we have yeah i actually should just let's highlight this line in red right so now that looks better okay so what do we get here um we are going to get the same point right so plug the zero into s we get one okay so that's good plug the zero into the second component here also getting zero which is the same value right plug the zero in here you get two so same point is that okay so that's good that's good yeah, so our point of intersection is one, zero, and two. And so the next step, the next step, actually, we don't need all this work because this is this work right here is simply just to do the checking. So we don't really need both pieces right here. This one is for checking. Yeah, so we already get the point. And so right now, the next step is to find the normal vector. So the normal vector of the plane. Yeah, so how do we find the normal vector of the plane? Well, we know that the plane contains the two lines, right? So what happened is that we can use the two direction vectors, of the lines, right? And then we take their cross product and then we can find the normal vector of the plane. Okay, so uh, what is the direction vector for the first line? It's actually just the coefficients of the t, right? So we get five, two, and one. Is that okay? So, so v one is just five, uh, two, and then one. And then what about the v two? Using the same idea here, just the coefficients of the s. So we get like the one, like the one, and one. So we get v two to be like the one, like the one, and one. 
Okay, so now we have the two vectors that will lie in the plane. And what happened is that all we need to do is to cross them. So we take the cross product. So n is equal to the v1 cross the v2. Is that okay? And then I actually just line them this way so that if I want to do it, I can simply just put ijk at the top and then I have my three by three determinant, right? So you can think of this as the three by three determinant and then you can do the cross product immediately. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, if we cross the first row, first column, we get two minus leg the one, right? So we get two minus leg the one, okay? Middle component, middle component, don't forget that there was an extra minus sign in the front. So we put the extra minus sign right here. And then what do we get here? Five, right? We get five. And then minus leg the one. So minus leg the one. Last component, cross out the first row, the column, we get negative five. And then minus negative two. So minus leg the two. And then, so right now, let's simplify the expression. Then we are going to get the vector. So we get the three as the x component. This one is five minus negative one. So we get positive six, negative six, right? Because of the extra minus sign. So we get negative six. Last one, we have negative five minus negative two. So plus two, so negative three. So we get the vector to be negative three. Okay, so we now have the normal vector. We have um, the point intersection, I think I just wrote it wrong right here. It says normal plane, right? So yeah, it says the normal of the plane, but then I'm missing too many words right here, right? So normal vector, right? So we should, we should just change that. Okay, so we are good. And then what happens is that we are going to uh, write the equation. We're ready. So what do we have here? The equation, the plane equation. Yeah, so the plane equation is actually given by, um, now we use the normal vector, the components of the normal vector as the coefficients. So we are going to get um, three times x. Now we got to use this point, right? x minus one. Okay, x, well, x minus one. Then continue, and then minus six, and then uh, y, minus zero and then minus three and then z minus the two and that's equal to zero remember that's an equation right so we shouldn't be just writing the left hand side of the equation you also need to include the right hand side which is the zero here and then what happens right now we can do a little bit of algebra work here to turn the equation into ax plus by plus cz equals d, right? So we can do that. So distribute, so we get 3x minus 3 minus 6y minus 3z plus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so uh, combining the minus 3 and the 6, we get positive 3. Moving that to the other side, we get negative 3. So we get 3x minus 6y minus 3z is equal to minus 3. And if you do not really want all those coefficients is really because three goes into all those coefficients right here then what happens is that we can write the equation by dividing everything by uh, three so we get x minus two y minus z is equal to negative one and then we have the final answer right so actually this one can also be thought of as the final answer if you don't want to worry about simplifying right and then now this one is the most simplified form. Is that okay? So that's it for this problem. To help make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. I want to work together with you to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.